And we're starting right back where we left off. We've got router one, which has now acquired its IP address via DHCP. So let's head over there and let's do a quick check on it anyway. And you can see right there, third line internet address is 10.1.1.5 slash 24. And we're going to send some pings. Might lose a few packets here at first. To 10.1.1.1, and there we go, straight through, and then the next one will be 100%. So we're able to ping the VLAN 1 interface on the closest switch. Now let's try 10.1.1.100 over here on the multi-layer switch, which is also our DHCP server. And there we go. So IP source guard working just fine. It's looking at those packets coming in and saying, okay, I'm letting those through because the source address matches up. But what happens when that source address doesn't match up? Because here's where we're going next. I am going to swap out router one for router four. Router four has a hard coded IP address, 10114 slash 24. It is not DHCP related in any way. Then we'll send some packets from router four and see what's going on there. So I'll pause the video, do the swap out. We'll be right back. And the swap has been made. I'm on router four and just wanted to verify with you that with show CDP neighbor, you can see that it is now connected to router one's port on that switch. Well, it was previously router one's port on the switch. That's where source guard is. So what's going to happen when I try to send some pings to 10111? You can always get a timeout or two the first time, especially with everything we've got running here. But my rule of thumb is that I'll send three pings like this. And if I don't see anything, I know I've got a real problem. Because every once in a while, and I'm not just talking security, I'm talking about changing VLANs on a port, that kind of thing. Um, I didn't change VLANs here, but I changed the physical connection. It can take all the way to the end of the third ping to start getting your exclamation points. However, in this case, it doesn't look like we're getting any exclamation points at all. So four can't even begin to ping 10.1.1.1, which is the closest switch, and of course the one IP source guard is configured on. So what's happening right now is that the switch is getting those packets and just looking at the address and saying, hey, it fails the IP source guard because this source is 10.1.1.4. And there it is. So there's the IP address of the packets coming in. The switch is looking at those and saying, you know, forget it. This isn't matching up with my database, which of course, as we saw with show IP verify source, the entry is 10.1.1.1. So um, just to prove that the packets are actually leaving here, close your eyes or at least put on some sunglasses. <laughs> there's a lot going on here. This is a good command to run to from this vantage point from the router because you can see the packets are going out. We're not getting any kind of encapsulation failed or the packets aren't going anywhere or the lookup failed or anything like that. We're actually just getting a message point blank that says the packets are going out. What's happening again is that the switch is filtering them out. So we know IP switch guard is getting the job done. So we will get to that with the 100% less DHCP in the next video. At this point, I do want to go back to the switch because I want to show you the default here again. You can see that the, the interface is still up. And it has not been shut down and it won't be shut down by default. If you want the port to go into error disabled mode when it receives ports like that, you've got to enable that port security option that we talked about. And I just want to speak on that for a moment because it's way beyond the scope of the exam. But I know a lot of you will go beyond that as I like to. So just a couple of uh, real world tips about port security. <laughs> you can tell by the way I'm laughing, but already I can just tell you it's more of an art form than a science when it comes to using port security with IP source guard. A couple of real world tips here for you. First off, you have to use, of course, the port security option here as you would expect. You also have to enable port security on the same port. 
and I don't mean IP verify source port security, I mean switch port port security. You've got to enable that as well. I would also urge you to do some online reading because there are several discussions or rage fests or whatever you want to call them about um, certain DHCP options that may need to be turned off or may not to be turned off. Uh, again, not something we're going to go into for this exam, but again, it can be pretty tricky in the real world to get port security to work with IP source guard. Not always the easiest thing in the world and we're not worried about easy it's just sometimes you go with the theory and with the cisco docs and it's still not going to work because of that option so anyway should you go into that please do a little online reading before you dig in and spare your sanity what we're going to do next let's go back to that board because this is great you know this worked out beautifully but every once in a while you might want to use IP source guard with devices that aren't using DHCP to get their addresses. And we know usually router interfaces aren't using DHCP to get an address, they're hard coded. So what if we had a situation like this, and I apologize, we've got the letter I off the screen there. What if we had a situation like this, where we have the same switch in the middle and interface VLAN 110.111/24? But we've got a couple of routers on the same segment and they're hard coded, but we still want to use IP source guard because we know IP source guard is tied into DHCP snooping. So then it sounds like, well, we're not using DHCP, but we're using DHCP snooping. That sounds like the kind of thing we need to see in action on the live equipment. That's exactly what we're going to do on the very next video.